In this lecture, we go through an introduction to assembly and some motivations into why you should look at the logic from a lower level such as the assembly. If you remember, we talked about layers of transformation. As Richard Hamming says, the purpose of computing is insight. So you take the problem and you solve the problem. Uh, so we gain and generate insight by solving problems. So uh, how do we ensure problems are solved by electrons? Because the problem cannot be magically solved by electrons. So there is a huge gap in between. Therefore, the concept of layers of abstraction was introduced by the computer science community that breaks down the computational load into specialized areas so that one only needs to concentrate on his area. And there would be no need to worry about other domains. So we have the problem. The problem gets uh, transformed into algorithm by mathematicians. The mathematicians carry out rigorous mathematical formulation. Uh, the algorithm needs a program, a programming language uh, that is understandable by the computer or by the machine. Uh, this program needs uh, some system level support, uh, such as the program needs a compiler to transform the code into something that is understood by the machine directly. And it requires the services of operating system memory management modules and virtual memory. Then we have the instruction set architecture. These are the legal operations that the user can perform on the processor. The implementation of instruction set architecture is what is called the microarchitecture. The microarchitecture is transformed into logic. That logic is transformed into circuits and ultimately that runs on electrons. So this is uh, the abstraction model. The abstraction model has increased productivity. Now at any level, you would only require an interface into other levels or domains. For example, the compiler de designer would require the source code from the programmer layer and in return, the compiler would throw any error signals to help the programmer identify problems in their code. If there are no problems, if there are no errors, the code would get translated into uh, machine code. The compiler uh, does this without really knowing much about what the program does. Uh, this basically abstracts away complexities of various domains and builds a system of layers and interfaces, works on top of each other to abstract away the details of other domains. Here the blue or the light blue uh, is really what the programmer deals with, right? And everything underneath this the programmer doesn't really need to deal with that, right? So if you were to study computer architecture, it would really be the ISA architecture and implementation of the ISA, that is the microarchitecture. If you were to study system programming, you would have to deal with a high level programming language, a little bit of compilers, a little bit of assemblers, and a lot of operating system a lot of memory management modules and virtual memories. If you were to study computer organization and assembly, it would really be this, right? Some basic programming, a little bit of memory, and a lot of assembly. So this is the stack that is taught in computer science curricula all over the world. I hope now you understand the layers of abstraction and the way it has impacted the production of application development. Let's move further to have an introduction into assembly and some motivations for learning logic at a lower level. So why learn assembly language? Firstly, uh, I would say that uh, people usually think that assembly language is hard, but assembly language is easy. So why learn it? Why look at logic from a lower level perspective? By learning assembly language, you are giving yourself an added skill that is necessary for any managerial post. And as a manager, you would certainly want to be twofold ahead of your team. If you could solve problems that your colleagues are unable to figure out, you would certainly earn their respect. For example, you have a problem of optimization, 
and you need to optimize the code more than the compiler has op optimized it for you. You want to push optimization to the wall, then you need a good command and assembly language to manually have a look at a lower level into the assembly code. Assembly language is fast. A well-written program in assembly will often perform better than one written in a high level language. Again, for example, you have a, an application that needs to run in real time. So you need real time performance. The real time processing requires that some instructions or functions or modules needs to finish before a certain deadline or bad things could happen. Without a good understanding of assembly language, you won't have a good idea of how the high level code is compiled to machine level binary stream and how does that run on uh, the hardware. So assembly language makes you a better programmer. Uh, there are things that you cannot do with high level language because assembly is closer to the hardware. So you have more control over the hardware. Uh, assembly language would shine your problem solving skills that you otherwise would miss if you only programmed a high level language. I, in the end, again, I, I would say assembly language, uh, writing an assembly language code is easy and fun as well. Let's move on to the most important components of a computer system as shown in the figure. Uh, it has a processor, the heart of the system, memory and input output interfaces to, uh, through which it interacts with the external world. Here the main focus would be the processors and the memory block. So we know that uh, the processor is a unit that is responsible for executing instructions. An ordered list of these instructions is what is known as a program. But before anything else, the processor needs to fetch these instructions. And more importantly, the data required by these instructions. Therefore, the processor first needs to acquire this data from the memory and for that it needs a mechanism to send a request to tell the memory that it requires such and such information from such and such location and also whether it wants to read write from to that location in memory here the memory is the module that is responsible to entertain all these requests from the processor and give access to the memory this communication is performed using these buses that you can see on the screen. Buses are basically a group of signals assembled together. We have the address bus that is unidirectional, which only goes from the processor to the memory. This bus is used to send the address of the location to be read or written. And whether to read or write, this is signaled by the control bus. And because sometimes the memory location is not accessible or any other issue can occur, the memory must also be able to interact with the processor to send the processor some error signals. So essentially the control bus is a bi-directional bus. Uh, then we have uh, the data bus, which is understandably bi-directional because through this bus, we are able to read or write to the location specified by the number in the address bus. And the read write signals using are specified in the control bus. These buses are basically used by the processor to perform a meaningful job and control signals are used for synchronization. So let's uh, move further and have a glance inside the processor to discuss some of the most important components of a processor. We have the register file the register file is a small but very fast memory that is lying inside the processor. The register file operates almost at the speed of the processor. The register file is used to speed up operations of the processor without which we would have to access memory for every instruction, which would be very expensive. The intermediate results of instructions are stored into these registers, unlike the memory that is accessed by specifying an address these registers are addressed through their names that are different from processor to processor and then we have the uh, arithmetic logic unit 
that is responsible for all the arithmetic and logical operations. Uh, here we can see that the operands are obtained from the register file and the result is either moved to the memory or written back to the register file, depending on the requirements of control signals for the instruction being executed. The control signals ALU operation and res write tells the ALU what operations it must perform and whether to write the result in reg file. These signals are generated by a control box. The control box decodes the opcode part of the instruction and then it has to decide which signals are required by that instruction. If reg write is zero, the signal signals the processor that the operation is not interested in writing back to the register file. Rather, it wants to write into or read from the memory, depending upon the mem read and mem write signals. As we already said, that these signals are generated by the control box which is the most important module in design of any processor. So based on these signals, uh, the processor uh, decides whether to store the result into the memory or uh, back to the register memory. So this was uh, a brief account of the most important modules of a modern processor. Uh, this is basically the architecture for MIPS, and because of its simplicity, it was chosen. But uh, these components are more or less present in all processors and are defined by the instruction set architecture. So these instructions that we mentioned, uh, instructions are encoded into machine language as a stream of binary sequence that is understood by the machines only. This binary sequence, however very accurate for the machine, is nevertheless very vague representation for the humans to remember. Therefore, a system of mnemonics was introduced that uses human readable symbols. So symbols replaces this binary stream into symbols such as add, sub, mult, etc. Now writing a code an assembly and understanding the program becomes easy. These symbols are ultimately uh, processed by an assembler to replace these symbols uh, with its corresponding binary sequence as defined in the ISA. Mnemonics can vary from vendor to vendor. However, the instructions are grouped into three major classifications. Uh, in the broadest sense, they are ca categorized into an R type I type and J type instructions. R type instructions are the set of instructions that uses registers as their source and destination of words. So if add and mult are using source and destination as registers, these are R type uh, instructions. The I type instruction are instructions that uses an immediate value as one of its operands. Immediate value could be thought of as a constant uh, so adding or multiplying with a constant uh, are what makes them an I-type instruction. And J-type instructions are instructions that are used to control the flow of the program. That is true. Uh, conditional or unconditional terms. So under this classification, we have three major groups of instructions. Data movement instructions that are responsible for loading storing of data from and into the memory then we have the arithmetic logic instructions that are responsible to perform all the arithmetic and logical computations in a program uh, we have the program control instructions uh, that are responsible for controlling the flow of a program implementation of loops in a program to be more specific uh, then we have the special instructions uh, that are only available to the super users, to the system programmers or administrators. This is uh, the MIPS instruction format, just to explain the different types of format, instruction formats, instruction classifications that we discussed in the previous slide. So 
if an instruction uses registers as its source and destination operands, the instruction is an R type. Let me just uh, switch on the uh, laser pointer. So the source, we have a three register operands, two source and one de destination. So the source operands and the destination all are, are registers. Therefore, they classify as R type. I type uh, instructions contains at least one of the uh, source operands or is immediate. So that's why they're classified as I type instruction. J type, J type, if you can see, we have the opcode and the 26 bit immediate value, a constant value. This is the effective address to where we want to jump, conditional or unconditional. Uh, th this uh, is a jump in memory location. Uh, one more important thing about MIPS instruction format that, uh, is that uh, these uh, processors are based on uh, RISC processors. Uh, RISC means reduced instruction set computer. So RISC-based processors instructions are very uh, primitive and simple, like add, subtract, multi. Uh, even multiplication in some uh, architectures are considered as complex instructions. Uh, then we have the 8086 instruction format that are based on CISC processors. Uh, CISC stands for Complex Instruction Set Computer. Uh, instructions based on CISC processors are very complex in their nature. Uh, multiple instructions combined to form one instruction. So for example, uh, here we have the instruction prefixes. Instruction prefixes are uh, up to four prefixes are allowed, one byte each. So for example, the rep uh, prefix, REP for repetition. So if rep is used in any instruction, the instruction would get repeated over and over again. So this is a, a very strong concept uh, for uh, for operations uh, like string copies and string compares, uh, this can these uh, these uh, prefixes can be very handy. It can be one byte, two byte, and three byte. So the opcode we can see is not a uh, fixed instruction format. It's variable instruction format. So the instruction, depending on the complexity of the instruction, it can be one byte, two byte, or three bytes. Uh, then we have the mode RM and SIB. SIB stands for scale index and base. Uh, these are basically used for addressing. These are the addressing modes and are used for addressing purposes. And we know that the area to six has a very rich uh, format of collection of addressing modes. And we will uh, talk at length on the addressing modes of the 8086 at a later lecture. Uh, and we will uh, explain the concepts of displacement and immediate values uh, at a later uh, lecture.